and this is series 2 episode 4 part 7 and part 8 shastya of the purti is part 7 and satab shekam is part 8 hello welcome back to another video on astrology we are back in conversation with dr yv subarao and uh, uh, the de- the delay actually happened because of me and he was always eager to do you know continue the series and uh, so today uh we are going to do episode 4 of uh, series 2 and uh, as you know that we have uh, within an episode we have parts so this this will be part 7 and part 8 um and we have three more parts to go and uh, today's topic is going to be very interesting for uh, for all of us because he's going to talk about uh, sashti abda purti and uh, satabhishekam uh, and over to dr yv subbarao thank you so much sir thank you sir. for joining us initially i will answer two questions of the viewers that will be very nice of you sir to do that sir just the way earth has a moon saturn and jupiter also have moons some are bigger than mercury and earth itself do they have any effect on humans on earth please explain this is a good question we have only earth has only one moon there are about uh, 80 moons for the saturn and 79 moons for jupiter saturn excels jupiter in respect of moons but all these moons and these planets being very far off from the sun the effect of those moons will be directly on the other planets concerned and the concentrated the effect of magnetism is actually directed in the form of a reflection of the sunlight onto the earth so the moons effect will be on jupiter and moon's effect of saturn will be on saturn only and the resultant will be passed on to the earth so separately there won't be any effect of these moons on the earth our moon is just 2 lakh miles away similarly for the, those planets also but the planets themselves are at a great distances and therefore the effect will be only on those planets and the consolidated one the resultant one will naturally be passed on to the earth so separately we don't have any effect and another gentleman has asked i have three questions sir kindly provide some insights as we have north pole star dhruva and abichit polaris and vega as a geometric symmetry we could expect south pole star to hold it whereas on the south pole we don't have any single star holding so kindly explain this and the north pole it is very specific because magnetic needle always points to the north pole and the north pole is very bright and can be easily seen on any clear night uh, all through the year similarly vega will take over in its rotation according to the precession of equinoxes but you are saying that uh, according to geometric symmetry there should be another constellation at uh, south pole it's all right because i have been using geometric symmetry very often you seem to have caught that and uh, no doubt there is one planet that is called uh, sigma octavian and this sigma octavian is not bright at all it is very dim even with the telescope it is very di- difficult to locate the only point to that is we have got southern constellation and also a south cross south cross is similar to plus and southern constellation is a line so these two when projected will intersect at a point exactly on the south pole so it is only you can uh, direct these two points and then the line drawn intersection point you can find the south pole south pole as such like polaris is not visible it is very dim even with telescopes and for that too we are in the northern hemisphere the question of seeing such the south pole doesn't arise unless you are in australia or somewhere else. one viewer has asked for nadi jyotish or parasar or astra which is better we will deal it uh, very later more detailedly about nadi grandas because many people have got many uh, conceptions about it notions we will clear all those things later and the sun enters capricorn on january 14th makara sankranti occurs on that day then why you said that it has to be celebrated on december 21st i don't get your point sir our almanacs are confused they are neither completely based on tropical zodiac 
nor on Friday the Zodiac. That's a combination of loony solar. And in this loony solar, they have combined it so badly that they cannot go together with the, both the tropical and sidereal combined. You don't get the result. With sidereal, it is in January 14. With the tropical, it is always in December. The loony solar calendar makes a mistake of mistaking the tropical calendar equated to solar, this sidereal calendar. So they take the planets with them, especially the sun. Makar Sankranti is related to the sun and sun is always uh, ahead and therefore the tropical zodiac it is always running correct at December. So it is better to avoid confusion. You can have it on the that uh, winter solstice on December 21st, a holy dip. And also again, according to Panchanga in January 14th, there is absolutely nothing wrong in actually worshiping God twice or a number of times. It is something like Pura Puja. That's a good one, sir. <laughs> and another person asked for, at present we come across a lot more Gotras than those mentioned by you. Can you please enlighten on how these new Gotras can come into existence? And is there a person, is there a way a person's gotra can be traced by some genetic studies or in other words? Is it possible to classify all the human beings into seven different categories? The gotras, as I said, are of four, four lists, four sevens, twenty-eight, of which two are common, Atri and Vasista. Therefore, it gets reduced to twenty-two. There are mainly twenty-two gotras. Many people, as I also see, witness. When I attend in a temple, I also see some people saying totally a gotra unheard of. That is mostly pertaining to the profession they carried all through. So they have a misnomer that the profession is uh, actually considered as the gotra. And many of the castes also are after the professions. Therefore, this is a main gotras are 22. And if they don't have any knowledge about their gotra, then naturally they will have to say something about their profession or something. When the power of asks them, they will have to say something. So I have heard people saying, Pala gotra, that is about milk and dust and all that. They say that. People dealing in the waste paper, they say kaitam gotra, like that. So it goes after the profession. So these are the questions. And uh, this part is over, sir. We can proceed with the part seven and part eight now. And for part seven in this uh, series, the first one is Shashti Purti or Shashti Abdha Purti. In Sanskrit, Shashti Abdha Purti means six, 10 years, 60 years completion. It has great, great significance in Vedas also. A ritual a ceremony is performed when the male member of the house attains 60 years. It is called Shashtupurti celebration. And in this Shashtupurti celebration, the husband goes in marriage with his wife and the children celebrate this marriage. That is as a gratitude and token of having given birth to them and born loyal to such a model ideal parents right. and therefore as a token of gratitude the children celebrate the marriage and enjoy it. So this is a next one is in this marriage all the relatives are invited and uh, all the elders give presents and then bless the couple. This marriage is no longer for progeny anymore. It is for a totally different aspect of life. We have seen starting from the birth of the chain. We have seen different stages up to five Jupiter revolutions, five, twelve, sixty years. We have seen the first of the childhood and then the adulthood, adolescence. The third one is adulthood and marriage, three generations. He had the progeny. So he has uh, the children brought up and he has. Uh, retired from service and 60 years he is retired and he has to take altogether a different aspect of life. 
so this is called the what is uh, known as in uh, there are four stages in human life according to vedas balyam yavanam and then grahastham grahastham then vanaprastham so this grahastham is over we are now entering into the other 60 years is practically so vanaprastham and sanyasam so this vanaprastham is the 30 years that is for fourth uh, saturn's divisions the entire 120 years is divided balyam yavanam grahastham and then uh, here it comes to uh, vanaprastham and then sanyasam so this uh, yavanam and then grahastham go together we have completely completely covered it with uh, inquiring about the gotra and avoiding sagotra marriages the person is uh, married he has progeny and everything he has completed 60 years the five revolutions of jupiter is over he is entering into the sixth revolution and seventh revolutions so the shastapurthi sixth revolution seventh revolution after uh, sixth revolution and the shastapurthi satavshakam satavshakam will be in seventh revolution on jupiter so this is the shastapurthi in astrology also we have a significance after 60 years of life that is when jupiter and have completed one cycle in the horoscope the planets jupiter and saturn they return back to their positions in our horoscopes after 60 years back to their original position at the time of birth we have probably we have actually posted all the planets with their longitudes including jupiter and saturn so after 60 years jupiter and saturn would have come back to the original places that were found to be in our horoscope at the time of birth so one cycle of birth is so completely life is over so 120 years of imsotari dasha system or the actual span full longevity of the human being is divided into two cycles and the first cycle of 60 years is all materialistic and the second cycle of 60 years will be purely for spiritual evolution. So it starts with Shasti Purti. So it has got a great significance in astrology also. Now I will move on to the PowerPoint presentation, sir. Definitely, sir. I have enabled the sharing. Okay, sir. And this is series 2, episode 4, part 7 and part 8. Shasti of the Purti is part 7 and Satab Shekam is part 8. So it's a congratulations to the gentleman who has completed 60 years. So Shasti of the Purti. So here we are with this star. In this stage. Oh, stage. Five is over. We have 60 years age to 84 years. That is 6th revolution and 7th revolution of Jupiter. We are coming to stage 6 and stage 7. From stage 7 onwards, having lived up to stage 6, every moment you must think of the call from the high above. That's the normal human being who has lived already the 7 stages, the 7th stage, that is 84 years. Shatabhishekam is over. He should think of it. So we are now going to consider the sixth revolution, that is 60 to 72 years, that is Shashupurti. Here I have shown Jupiter and Saturn. These two, when set into motion, will naturally transit in our horoscope. Jupiter nearly transits five times in our horoscope and Saturn two times. So Saturn signifies because 60 years of first cycle of life, of 120 years, there are two cycles. And first cycle of 60 years, we find five revolutions of Jupiter. The transit of Jupiter in the horoscope, each transit is different. It brings a different result. That's why the revolution periods are taken into prediction. Especially Jupiter for marriage. And here the Saturn is actually considered, its revolution is considered for longevity. Whether one survives for past uh, 
revolution of Saturn or second revolution or third revolution. So the longevity can be estimated by stages or steps of 30 years with reference to Saturn. And marriage we can be re referred to in steps of 12 years of Jupiter's revolution. I have put in a small equilateral triangle here, very feeble. It can be observed. This equilateral triangle, the three sides are equal, the three angles are also equal. For Jupiter, for complete revolution, one revolution, it passes the, to the three sides of the triangle. So for 12 years it completes. Each side is four years for Jupiter. For easy understanding of the, by the viewers, I have put it. The triangle has got three sides and each side is a four years duration for Jupiter. So it completes one triangle, one revolution. It has completed 12 years. Each side is four years. Similarly, in the case of Saturn, these three sides, 30 years, one revolution. Each side is 10 years. Now it can be seen, it is set into motion. So Jupiter and star Saturn are actually moving and they are in their orbits. This is the Jupiter's orbit and this is the Saturn's orbit. Jupiter has completed one revolution, so one has appeared here. And Saturn is slowly moving. It is not able to compete with Jupiter. Jupiter has completed two revolutions and Saturn is coming to the first, the end of the first revolution. So third revolution of Jupiter is over. The fourth revolution of Jupiter is over and Saturn is coming back to the completion of second revolution and Jupiter fifth revolution. So they have come back to their original position after five revolutions of Jupiter and two revolutions of Saturn. So this is 60 years, two revolutions for Saturn and this is five revolutions, 12 years at the rate of 12 years per revolution, 60 years. So 60, 60 common, that's the LCM. So they meet at this point. You must have observed in its course the transit of Jupiter and Saturn. They have met here once in the first time. This is the first meet. That is when Jupiter has made one two-thirds revolution. That is one revolution is over for Jupiter. And two sides of the triangle, one two-third revolution, Jupiter has come here. And Saturn has come only in the first revolution, it has passed from only two sides of the triangle, two-thirds revolution. So they meet here. But not at the original starting point. At the starting point, they meet only after 60 years, come back to the original position. Whereas in between the 60 years, these two planets meet at 20 years here. Similarly, the second meet will be here. The second meet is Jupiter after completing three revolutions, that is 36 years, and one third, that is one side of the triangle, for 40 years. Similarly, for Saturn, one and one third revolutions. One revolution is 30, and one third is a 10. Therefore, 30 plus 10, 40. At 40 years common for both, they meet here. So, in a 60 year complete cycle, coming back to the original position, in between they meet once a year at 20 years, and another at after another 20 years, 40 years. And finally, at 60 years, they come back to the original position. This is very important in understanding Chathabhishekam also. So, this 60 years completion, within that, we find the meeting place elsewhere at the different segments of the zodiac. They meet here. So, at the 20 years, after starting from the starting point, they meet here. After 40 years, they meet at this point. After 60 years, they come back to their original position. So, by completing one six cycle, we are we have already seen five transits of Moon, five revolutions of uh, uh, Jupiter in the horoscope, and two revolutions of Saturn. So, with each revolution of transit, there will be a change brought out in our lives. Because the first cycle of 60 years is not going to be repeated in the second cycle of another 60 years from 60 to 120. Definitely we know that. Therefore, each transit 
has a different meaning and that is the reason that the transits of mostly Jupiter major planets like Jupiter and Saturn are considered, their revolution periods are considered. And especially Jupiter for auspicious things like marriage and Saturn for longevity. Here I have put in, with each complete revolution they come back and that is shifted by about 8 degrees in the segment. They meet at different segments of the zodiac. This yellow line, yellow circle is the zodiac. They meet at different segments. If it has met at one point, later it meets here, later it meets here. Like that it goes on shifting and it will cover the entire thing. The 360 degrees of the zodiac over a period of time. So with each time, this shift will be about 8 degrees. Here also we find the mysterious number. I have brought it again here. I have already discussed it earlier. And this is a special occasion. Jupiter and Saturn, great conjunction, is going to take place in Aquarius, synchronous with winter solstice on December 21st, 2020. This is a great event. This is winter solstice, according to Tropical Almanac, is on December 21st. And great conjunction in Aquarius, synchronous with that. Jupiter and Saturn will naturally be conjunct in Aquarius on the same day. That can be easily seen just a little after sunset. So this Jupiter and Saturn, they are conjunct. They appear like this immediately after the sunset on December 21st. Here I have put in Jupiter conjunct to Saturn. Jupiter and Saturn great conjunction will occur on December 21st, 2020 at 0 degrees Aquarius 0, 06 minutes, 00, 00 Aquarius 18 minutes, just to they are entering Aquarius. And this, this can be easily observed on December 21st because that's almost a very uh, longest night we find. Sunset is, sunset will be earlier and immediately we will half an hour or one hour after that. One hour after sunset on December 21st, we can see it immediately in the southwest, southwest direction after sunset. Here I have put in again the 60 year mysterious number. Down from Kali Yuga, up to the heartbeat and even lower, even lower also, the subdivisions. Uh, is completely cyclic one. Seconds will naturally, 60 seconds will make one minute, 60 minutes will make one hour, 24 hours will make uh, one day. So these are all cyclic, seven days in a week. And similarly, the 60 years in our almanac, the Ugadi years, that in Tamil they say Putandu and the New Year and so on and so forth. Therefore, 60 years we have got in the almanac, starting from Prabhava to Akshayanam Samutra, the 60th one. There are a number of these 60 years named here. And I have given also the occurrence of this uh, same name years boom, in four sets. I was born in 1938. And it can be seen here, 1938 is here. That is in Bahudanya year. Therefore, in 1998, my 60 years Shashpurti was over. And in 2018, Satavishakam was over. So the next one is 2059. That is totally unimaginable. <laughs> so people can easily see in which year they were born. And that year can be seen here. And when the 60 years fall, so once it's 60 years, we find this cycle of 60 years coming down, coming up. This is a cyclic one in our almanac. Here also a mysterious number. I have put in for the information of the viewers. The orbital period of Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, the three planets which we have neglected in our horoscope, in our astrology, they are considered here and their revolution periods are put in days, 30,000 days, 60,000 days and 90,000 days respectively. That is, in the ratio of 1 is to 2, 2 is to 3. And 60 is common. 
So there is 16 years mysterious number even in this also. The next one is the Earth's diameter and the Moon's diameter combined together added. This is A and this is B. A plus B is equal to 10,080 miles. Put in miles, you get this. And that is 16 to 116. You get again 60 a mysterious number. And this is equivalent to the minutes in the week. Total number of, that is 24 hours a day, 60 minutes per hour and 7 days in a week. Total is 24 by 7. You get 10,080 10, minutes. And this 20,080 minutes is the same as this. Therefore, 16, 168, 60 is, 60 is a mysterious number. The same thing is expressed in mathematics as 2 into 1, in, 1 into 2 up to 7. It's the same thing as 2 into 7, 8, 9, 10. That is the same product, which is 2 factorial 10 divided by factorial 6. So the mysterious number 60 is seen here. And part 7 ends here and part 8 begins. Part 8, Sadabhishekam. So again, congratulations to the young man, <laughs> having become an 80-year-old young man. So the Sadabhishekam will be taking place. In Sadabhishekam, the basic difference between Sashtipurti and Sadabhishekam is that he celebrated on the completion of 60 years and the wife and her husband go into marriage and totally deciding to take up spiritual evolution and having lived for nearly 20 years spiritually and most morally and ideally for the ideal couple and old people for the younger generation, they for the posterity also. After 80 years, while well, at the completion of 60 years in the marriage celebration, all the elders will give presents and then bless him. At 80 years, it is the turn of this couple to bless everybody younger to them and give presents away to the younger ones and not receive any more because they are already spiritually evolved. They don't believe in taking presents, rather believe in giving anything what they have. Here also I am showing again the same thing but at a great speed. <laughs> So I'm completing one revolution, one cycle, 60 years very quickly. So the two revolutions over, one revolution of Saturn is over, fourth revolution of Jupiter is over, fifth revolution of Jupiter and Saturn. Both have completed one cycle. One great conjunction cycle is over for both Jupiter and Saturn, 60 years is over. And another they have passed, they have come to 80 years. And therefore, they make a revolution of these two planets for 20 years only. So they come and meet here, as I told you. 60 years they have completed. This side is 10 years for Jupiter, for Saturn. And therefore, this is 10 and this is 10, 20. And so for Jupiter, this will be 4, 4, 8, 4, 12, again 4, 16 plus 4, 20. So Jupiter will make one complete revolution and two-third revolutions. Saturn will make only two-third revolution. So they meet again after 20 years. So 60 years after 60 years, another 20 years, Jupiter and Saturn move. Jupiter has completed one revolution. They have both come here and 80 years is over. So this is Satavishekam. Here the difference is only that after 60 years, after another 20 years have lapsed and both of them meet at a different point, not at the starting point. And so the life of the 120 years of Imsotari Rasha period is considered, is taken in steps of 20 years. So it is 80 over and at 100 it will take place here and at 120 it will take place back at the original point. So life is, will be counted once in steps or stages of 20 years hereafter. So 60 to 20, 80 years. At 80, the celebration is called, it's a great celebration. It is also called the Setabhishekam. So in that, the difference is they give away what they have, but they don't receive anything more. So it is a renunciation to the peak. 
now after that and almost simultaneous with it during that 81st year this thousand sahasra chandra darshana that is also known as sahasra sahasra purna chandrodaya is actually observed by everybody to have fulfilled their desires in life by seeing the moon thousand moons full moons because moon is considered to be in astrology a giver of everything and in plenty there is a most beautiful reflection of moon also in the himalayas as one gentleman has asked the question about the moons here jupiter has 79 moons our earth has only one moon our earth moon is has influence on the earth very much because it receives sunlight during the night time from the sun when he has no more he is not seen any more by the earth for another 12, 12 hours and therefore the reflected light of the moon is actually giving effect on the earth whereas these moons will have effect only on those planets so jupiter has 79 moons similarly saturn has the most moons 82 and here i have given the list mercury has nothing venus has no moons earth has one mars has two jupiter 79 saturn 82 uranus 27 and neptune 13 all together we have more than 200 moons in our solar system so the sahasra purna chandrode according to vaigana samashi the author of vengeshwar suprabhatam the four parts he has actually given Vaikanasa Maharshi is no other, no other than direct Vishnu. Vishnu himself in the Pancharatra, another Vaikanasa Agama Shastra is one. And another one is Pancharatra. What is Pancharatra? Saivam and Agamam. These are all Agamas. Saiva Agamam, Pancharatra Agamam and Vaikanasa Agamam. Vaikanasa Agamam and Pancharatra Agamam, Vaishnava Agamas. And Saiva Agamam is completely for Shiva devotee. So here, this Vaikhanasa Agamam and Pancharatram are both about the Vishnu. But the difference is, in Vaikhanasa Agamam, in Pancharatra Agamam, it is different. The same thing told over a period of five days, five nights. So the, in Vaikhanasa Agamam, it is done immediately by Lord Vishnu. Because Vishnu did not find a disciple who could take that Vaikana Sagamam immediately. So he had uh, around, he has around himself as Vaikana Samahashi. So he is the Guru as a Vishnu. And also Vishnu in the form of Vaikana Samahashi has come to the other side and as a disciple. So this Vaikana Sagamam, Vaikana Samahashi, that is Vishnu himself says that 80 years, 8 months, 8 days, just sufficient to have a complete view of thousand moons. So on that day, another celebration is made of the 80-year-old couple within the completion of the 81st year. After eight months, eight days, another function is done. But for economic reasons, all the things are clubbed together. 88, 81, Shastyabhiputin, Chathabhishekam, Chathabhishekam and uh, Sahasra Purnavadai, Chandravadai, both uh, events are celebrated on the same day at 80 years, 8 months, 8 days. In the Sahasra Purna Chandrodaya, why Vaikana Maharshi has said thousand full moons is sufficient, this period is sufficient. 80 years, 8 months, 8 days is sufficient for thousand moons. So 80 years we have got 18 to 12, 960 months. And in 80 years divided by two and a half, that is every two and a half years, there is an Adhikamasam in our Panchanga occurring because of the lunisolar calendar, the sun is always a step backward. He is similar to a short hand in a clock. And the moon is a long hand. Moon runs far ahead. And he makes nearly 13 revolutions when sun has completed only one revolution. Therefore, the difference in that is every two and a half years, there will be an Adhikamasa. So in 80 years, divided by two and a half, we have got 32 intercalary months. Even in Mahavartam and people, Kauravas were actually jubilant having spotted Pandavas much earlier than this stipulated period. Bhishma pumps into their mind the, the actual intellectual point 
that the intercalary months need to be taken. So this Adhikamasami is there even in Mahabharata times also. <laughs> and eight months is, we have got another eight full moons. So 960 totally in 80 years, 32 intercalary months and eight months in eight, uh, in eight months, eight full moons. Therefore, total thousand moons. What does this eight days stand for? This is a small correction in the moon's rotation revolution period. So, 80 years, 8 months, 8 days is completely sufficient for that. And again, here I have to tell upon, because life is being measured in steps of 20 years after 60, 80 years, Uttarayana and Tashra and Punekalam, these are considered essential because everyone will have to be ever conscious of the last call, the last moment, and the call from the high above. Therefore, if anybody thinks that both misfortune and death dare not touch him, it is uh, the height of uh, ignorabus. Therefore, to be wise, one must be always conscious of the next moment. Therefore, he must do maximum good things every moment and not uh, spare or delay it or postpone it for the next moment. So from 80 onwards, having lived that much of time, one must be very conscious and he is conscious of Uttarayana Punika. What is this Uttarayana Punika? As I told you about the four cardinal points of the astronomical year, the vernal equinox on December or March 21st and the autumnal equinox on September 22nd. So this Aries and autumn, this is Libra, have come together. And here we find Cancer and then Capricorn here. So the summer solstice in June and the winter solstice in December. This Uttarayana Punekala is an extent of six years, six months in our almanacs also. This is Uttarayana Punekala from December 21st to June 21st. The six months period is called Uttarayana Punekala. When the Vaikuntha gates or doors are open for the souls to enter, people who pass, there is a belief in us that people who die in Uttarayana Punekala, they reach the heaven. That is why Vaikuntha, because the doors are open. Actually, Vaikuntha doors, door, though they are open, they are open only for the people who have attained moksha, not for everybody. But it is the belief. At least if we pass away in Uttarayana Punekala, now we go to some extent towards that gate, door. And slowly in stages, we finally pass through the door. And that's why in temples also in Uttarayana Punekala, we find the doors are open and we enter specially into the temple and through that door, through that entrance. And Dachshnayana Punekala is also equally, it's also called Punekala. But this Punekala is totally different. It's a preparation for the Punekala of the Uttarayana. Uttarayana Punekala is a Punekala for exit. Dachshnayana Punekala is a preparation for exit. Therefore, Dachshnayana of 6 months is also equally important. Because here we have got Sravana, Bhadrapada, Asuja and uh, Margasira Masas coming one after the other. And in this period we find that maximum classical dances, classical music, concerts and all these things take place and then divert our attention towards spiritual evolution. So that's the, And it starts with the rainy season. It cools our body and helps us to meditate during that period. We need not go on rubbing the sweat and all that like summer. So it is a very comfortable climate in Dakshinayana, starting with the rainy season. And this Savana Bhadrapada we find very auspicious month. Here Navaratra, Navaratra also will come there. The Dashara and the Deepavali, everything. We celebrate these festivals. Classical music and dances and also all these programs are done based on the our devotion. And therefore, Dakshrayana Punikalam is a preparation. And Margasira Masam is most, Kartika Masam is another important uh, thing for Shiva. And therefore, Margasira Masam is another extraordinary important auspicious Masam in this Dakshrayana Punikalam because Margasira Masam will naturally pave the way for Uttarayana Punikalam, the entry, the beginning. Because Margasira is the last one for Dakshrayana or before the entry of a in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says that among the masas, that is amongst the month, 
and the Margasira. So Margasira Masam is actually the last months of the Dakshinaya Punyakalam, by which time it is deemed that you have been prepared for the exit in the Punyakalam through the door of the Vaikuntha. And this is the picture of Grand Sahib Bhishma. This has happened in Mahabharata War. I may also at this particular point juncture inform my viewers that I was born in 1938 and a year after that the Second World War broke out in 1939. So I was conscious of the entire Second World War and grew nearly by seven years old because it went on from 1939 to 1945 when the League of Nations were completely failed and gave way for the United Nations to come in. Any war is undesirable because it, I know the pangs of the war during the war time and also the post-war also. I had to run to the ration shop for all the necessary groceries and stand in long queues as a chain. And we get only inception quantities. And that too, even if you can, that too only if you can afford the economically. So that is the plight of the World War. Though we are not directly involved in that, we had the effects of the World War. Everything is controlled. Nothing is available. Whatever small amount is available, you must have money sufficient for, to buy it. So that was the condition. But Mahabharata War is the most desirable war on many counts. One is it established dharma in the very first thing. The second thing is, Lord Krishna himself, the celestial song Bhagavad Gita has been made available to us for the posterity to attain moksha. And the third one is, Vishnu Sahasranam for the first time has been spelt by Grand Sahib Vishma when he saw Lord Krishna visiting him when he was on the bed of arrows. And when Krishna said instead of the spanks, he would grant him boon and exit. Vishma Charja has told him, I want to wait, have my exit only after the advent of Uttarayana. Because Mahabharata war took place two months, two lunar months before, two lunar months, ten days before. And he fell on the tenth day in the war on the bed of arrows. And the support was given to his head by Lord Arjuna. And also Lord Krishna visited him. He recited Vishnu Sahasranam. Vishma Chaya has got the boon from his father for his wow, his promise that he would not get married and do not come in the way of any for the kingship or incesting of his children, father's children. And so he said he would not marry. So in token of that, as a reward, his father rewarded him the, the boon to die at will. That is on his own volition. That is, Bhishma has got Swachanda Mrityu or Icha, Icha Mrityu or Swachanda Marana. These are the two things that are available. That is the same thing available to him. So he waited for two lunar months completely after falling down on this from the chariot and then attained moksha. So this war is most desirable that it had established dharma in the first instance and Bhagavad Gita and Vishnu Sahasranama, the two guiding spirits for us have come into being. And that is the end of part 8. This is the end of episode 4 and part 7 and part 8 are over. Part 9 and 10 will come next session and part 11 will naturally see the end of series later. So thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So I think you can uh, stop the screen sharing. Yeah. So it was really wonderful, sir. <laughs> sir, we, I have sir. one doubt when you said about uh, the conjunction of Saturn and uh, um, Jupiter in yeah. Aquarius, you are uh, obviously referring to the tropical only yes, because you are yes, referring to yes. winter solstice, right? Yes. Yeah. So in Indian system, uh, it would be, uh, Jupiter will be in Capricorn. Capricorn. Uh, Saturn also will be in Capricorn. 
in Capricorn, uh, but not on uh, so, tropical solstice. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I, I understand because uh, we, the, the solstice is based on the tropical, yeah. Yes. Okay, that's the point. Okay. That's very interesting, sir. And okay. uh, somehow every time you are coming up with some uh, very <laughs> unique concepts and ideas, I hope you have patented this uh, information. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the YouTube video also is kind of a patent only. So uh, My Saturn is actually inimical to me, but he is placed in the ninth house, debilitated okay. and aspected by the lord of the house. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Rajayoga planet, the Mars. Mars, okay. So, I am given both the renunciation and the devotion and the mining engineering also because of Saturn. <laughs> But you somehow seem to, you know, connect the numbers, uh, you know, in various formats. Yes, yes. You could see that. Even that, uh, even Dimshotri Dasha, you said again, it was a 60 and 60. And again, yes, it is yes. coming back in so many, you know, ways. Very, very Because the whole of Vedic uh, scriptures say, in all the Vedas, the various syllables in the line and the uh, number of lines in the canto, all okay. these things are related to 108 and 60 only. All the four Vedas. Oh, wow. Okay. So, this is a numerical uh, way of uh, putting things. Uh, even Gayatri is 108 meter uh, word, uh, uh, this uh, uh, syllable uh, meter. Okay. So, the whole thing is 108 and 60. That's really nice. But, uh, I mean, not only noting noting down these patterns, but the way you have given us the PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> which is uh, one of the highlights of all that we are going through, you know, uh, the episodes. It's really remarkable, and I'm sure we will, we will meet again and again to share yes, more sir. knowledge with our subscribers. Very kind of you for the compliment. Thank <laughs> you. We have come to the end of this video. In case you have any doubts, please type them out in the comment section. And whenever I find the time, I'll answer them for you. And see you soon in my next video.